I'm Sarah Fawkes in Quito, and in conjunction with Newt Street World 2021 Annual Conference, I'm speaking today with James Taylor, President and CEO of Bricksmore Property Group. James, thanks for joining me today. Of course. How are fundamentals shaping up for Bricksmore in the final quarter of 2021, and how is the company positioned for 2022? Well, we're very pleased, Sarah, to have raised guidance as we did on the call this afternoon, reflecting improvement in collections as well as our strong leasing, which has really continued for the last few quarters with great national tenants, reflects in part our strategy of reinvesting in our shopping centers, but also the great demand from those tenants to be in our shopping centers. And as I mentioned, you know, we really have three real strong indicators of our forward growth, not only into the fourth quarter, but also into 2022 and beyond. The first of which is those signed leases that haven't commenced paying rent yet. So we have about $44 million of signed contractual leases that we will begin recognizing in the fourth quarter and then over the balance of 2022 and beyond. Behind that, we have an additional 50 plus million dollars of leases that we have in negotiation, a pipeline that is as strong as it's been uh, really since the pre-pandemic uh, era. So we're very encouraged by that. And the third element of future growth that we have great visibility on is our forward reinvestment pipeline. We have about $400 million of essentially pre-leased reinvestment going into our portfolio at an average return of a little over 9%. So as we look at our forward leasing progress and that uh, important uh, reinvestment pipeline uh, that's pre-leased, we feel real good about how we're set up, not just for the fourth quarter, but for several quarters to come. Can you discuss the balance Bricksmore is seeing between reinvestment opportunities and acquisitions? Well, clearly the most compelling return on invested capital comes through reinvestments, where you know, we're putting capital to work at high single, low double digit incremental returns, which is particularly compelling when you think about our asset class today is generally valued in the five cap rate range. So the ability to deploy capital at several hundred basis points above where that capital would be valued on a yield basis is particularly attractive. You know, with that said, we are finding some acquisition opportunities in markets that we're currently focused in, where there's upside in the leases, perhaps some occupancy or an ability to add additional density or redevelopment to the site to drive returns to being acceptable, even in a compressing cap rate environment. So we really like that balance, if you will, of reinvestments in the existing portfolio supplemented by acquisitions that will be future fuel for our reinvestment pipeline. What are you hearing from your retail tenants in terms of their continued confidence in brick and mortar retail? You know, our tenants really found through the pandemic that the store was central to their strategy of serving the customer. When you think about the great retailers, Target, Walmart, Best Buy, many others, they found a way through the pandemic to leverage the asset, the store, in serving the customer how the customer wanted to be served, whether it was in the store, on the curb, or being fulfilled out of the store. The real challenge for the completely e-commerce oriented retailer is the retention of the customer, you know, the lack of a real physical connection between the retailer and the customer being served. So if anything, the pandemic really reinforced the central role that the store plays in the retailers go to market strategy. And we're seeing the benefits of that in our leasing pipeline. You know, we're seeing substantial demand for the vacancies that we have in our portfolio and for the boxes as they become available, really reflecting uh, the importance to these growing retailers of the bricks and mortar store. Now, the store may evolve and change in terms of its format or how much is used for fulfillment, et cetera. But the important thing is that we have flexible formats to accommodate the evolution of those formats that importantly is also near where the customer lives. So we're very encouraged by what the pandemic actually revealed uh, about the importance of the store. You remember the narrative going into the pandemic was that bricks and mortar would be obsolete. I think if anything, the pandemic accelerated a lot of trends, but perhaps the most important 
was the realization by these tenants as to the central role the store plays. James, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. And for more news and information from REIT World, be sure to visit NEREIT's website, REIT.com.